We've already discussed linearization, and we've discussed using a local linear approximation. In this process, we take a curve, and we consider one point on the curve, and we look at the tangent to the curve at that point, and we define that tangent line as a new function, which we'll call t of x, where t stands for tangent. And then the equation for the tangent function t of x would be found from the point slope form for the equation of the line. t of x is f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And everywhere in the vicinity of x equals a, we have t of x is a good approximation for f of x. That's the local linear approximation. Now I'd like to describe a new application of linearization, and that is the propagation of errors from, say, x into y. Again, we're looking at a curve, and we're looking at one point on that curve. But now, instead of one value of x, I'm going to consider a whole range of values of x, as indicated by this, these orange marks. That range of values of x, which we call a width delta x, corresponds to a range of different values of y, which we'll call delta y. And the relationship between delta x and delta y is very close to the slope of that tangent line, which would be dy over dx. So delta y over delta x is approximately equal to dy over dx, the derivative at the point in the center of that interval. This is not a surprising equation since the definition of the derivative dy over dx is a limit of delta y over delta x. If I multiply both sides of that equation by delta x, I have delta y is approximately equal to dy over dx times delta x. It's an approximate relationship, but it becomes more and more precise as delta x and delta y become small. So these are the two equations. These two equations I circled are the two equations that represent the applications of linearization. And if you think those two equations are two different equations, well, subtract f of a from both sides of this one, and then you'll notice that if you simply use a different notation to designate each of the parts of that equation, those two equations are really the same equation. So it's not two separate ideas or two separate subjects. It's all linearizations, the same idea. And the more you work with it and understand it, the more you'll understand it to be the same thing. So let's look at an application. If we want x squared to be within a tenth of a unit of 4, then how close does x have to be to 2? What does it mean to be within a tenth of a unit of 4? It means you're within the bounds of 3.9 and 4.1. That is x squared constrained to be within a tenth of a unit of 4. Now, of course, since I'm, I'm picking a simple relationship, uh, just plain x squared, um, you can easily do this one with your calculator by taking a square root of 3.9 and 4.1, and you'll see that to three decimal places, x has to be between 1.975 and 2.025. But we want to use this relationship between delta x and delta y that calculus gives us and verify that we get the same thing. Delta y is approximately dy dx times delta x. So I need dy over dx. If y equals x squared, dy over dx is 2x. And that's equal to 4 at the value of x that we're interested in. So the relationship between delta y and delta x now is that delta y is about equal to 4 delta x. And if we want the value of delta y to be 0.1, then delta x would have to be a quarter of that, or 0 0.025. And that is, in fact, exactly what we found when we did it with the calculator. 0 0.025 below 2 to 0 0.025 above 2. Just demonstrated that it worked. There's one other thing to discuss, and that is what is meant by fractional error or percent error. Just to make sure you understand how to do the problems, Fractional error or percent error is just found by taking the error and dividing by the total amount of that quantity. Delta y over y or delta x over x is the fractional error or the percent error. So here's an activity that you can try. Suppose you have a relationship between y and x that's just a power law relationship. y equals ax to the fifth where a is a constant. Your challenge is 
to find a simple relation between delta y over y, the fractional error in y, and delta x over x, the fractional error in x. And I'll give you a hint. The fractional error in y is just equal to some constant times the fractional error in x. See if you could find that constant.